so we've got a whole new setup going on here and I'm hoping this now it'll actually be in frame I've got a new camera my lovely sons bought me an early Mother's Day gift so I now have a Canon Rebel T7 nice nice camera a lot nicer than I need <laughs> or understand. It's taken a lot to figure out how to hook it up so I could see what I'm videotaping. So you are hooked up to a laptop. That's cool. Anyhow, so I made this design because I had bought one, full honesty. Um, I bought one. My son wanted an eyeglass case and I was going to make it and I started and then I didn't finish it. I was being lazy. I found one online. I won't talk about companies because I'm sure it was user error. But I had printed out the book, read the book, followed it step by step. And I ended up with it enclosed. And I'm like, something ain't right here. <laughs> and for the first time and ever, I think, I emailed a designer to find out what I had done wrong. Well, I didn't hear, it was weekend, you know, it was like 2.30 in the morning when I sent it on a Sunday morning. And so Sunday, I just went ahead and made, I finished my design. I mean, it looks similar to the one I bought because this was what he had wanted. But it is not put together like it. It's actually put together more similarly to another designer's stuff. And I actually had to go back to her stuff for kind of reference, if that makes sense. Um, because I just, it wasn't, when I was layering them together, I'm like, I'm missing something. I'm missing a step here. What am I doing wrong? So, I've developed a whole book to go with it. And what we're doing today is we are checking, we're going step by step through the book. Oh, yes, I am Vestra Era, and I have had a store on Etsy. I started this particular store in 2008. The only reason I remember that is because I looked it up. Before that, I was DV Designs. I have actually made embroidery designs sporadically for 20 years. I am so hyper particular that um, they tend to not get done. I've probably got a thousand designs that I made and never released because there'd be one little thread I didn't like where it was. I would drive myself insane. So I just worked, you know, full time in a grocery store. It was easier. I tend to be a perfectionist when I'm doing certain things. But anyhow. So last night, I cut, set this down, and I cut out the fabrics. And I do have two embroidery, or two machines that can do embroidery, I should say. I have a Baby Lock Flourish 2 that I just received. I ordered that. I'll even tell you where I got it from. Uh-oh. Sewing Machines Plus. In California they were the only people that had one in stock that I found I'm not saying no one had them I'm just saying that I found and I when my fof was in the shop I couldn't stand it and I ordered this and it's not it's a, a you know it's not the lowest costing machine you can get but it's the lowest costing machine with a 6 by 10 field you can get and I at the time of this video, when I purchased it in April of 2021, it was only $1,500. And they sent me a 10% coupon for 10% off. And I got a thread kit with it. So, and free shipping. <laughs> I mean, they're practically paying me to buy it. So, you know, I got another embroidery machine. My FAF, I, you know, I've got a quilt wadded up off to the side on my sewing table that I really need to get put together. I need to quilt it. So the Faf is going to test sew another one of these 
for the VP3. I can't test so any other styles, but the it was made in PE Design 10. So the PES is the original files. And the, anyone that were to use this, they could always, I will have, I used in Brilliance and converted them. So they'll be in there, but if they have problems with that, they can go back to the PES and convert it themselves if they have software. So I'm trying to cover all bases. Like I said, I tend to be a perfectionist about this stuff. That's why it never gets released. So this is my eyeglass case. And it's nice and simple. There are two sizes of fabric you need to cut. A lining, batting, and your outside material. The pretty stuff. So this is the main. I set the book up to literally say main batting lining. So it tells you to cut from each fabric batting cut a four and a half by a ten and a half and a four and a half by eight. And obviously they can be a little bigger. So if you've got a, a scrap that's, you know, got a little wumpy thing, you don't even have to worry about that because it has to be a minimum of four and a half inches wide. That is the minimum. I tried it at four inches because the eyeglass case finished is uh, three inches wide. So I tried four. No. <laughs> no. It was too close. Um, and I tried nine and a half inches. And my personal eyeglass case has got a seam on the inside on the bottom because you could just see the bottom edge. You know, these were my testings. And so ten and a half is what I say. Minimum of ten and a half in length. Minimum of eight in length. This is for an eight by ten, but the back uses an eight by ten, and the front can be sewn on a five by seven. So, unfortunately, you do have to have an eight by ten, but I've been setting up both hoops right in the beginning, and I like that because you know now I'm just boom, boom. So I'll stitch out my placement stitch and I get this done, the front done, excuse me, the back done. And I can set this aside and go ahead and start the front. And then in between, I take it out and break it down and fold it and iron it and have it all ready to go. Okay, step two, we have to put down first hooping, yellow stitching, well, of course, I used red so you could see it, and you can use any color you want. It's the pattern color. The color I used in the pattern, the first one is yellow. You don't put any fabric down. If you want the snap placement, lay down the batting. I told you I was literally following the book. Sorry if it's irritating. But, you know, to be honest, the only one watching this is my grandson. <laughs> Hi, Jackson! Love you! Now, if you want the snap placement guide, which I do, because I got one crooked and it drove me nuts, so I'm going to place them now. Okay, it's done the snap placement. This is all upside down to you. I'm so sorry. It did the snap placement, just tiny little X right there. Got all this, made sure that I was over all my lines. See? Now I will take my, and I use statin, I know, it's crazy. I'm a crazy lady. It frayed so bad after. I've been trimming and trimming and I almost had to cut another piece. 
I thought I'm gonna give it a shot get that lay down there just right if you are worried about it moving which satin does a lot of just put a little tape over the corners this is the last stitching for this hoop here like I said unfortunately for the flat part to have the flat you have to have the 6 by 10 okay so this is the top this is the bottom I put my frayed part at the top because the stitch line is actually going to drop down a little farther up there. I thought I had a little more room for play. And now we're back to the machine. And we will do All right. Sorry, it's not hard to put this in. It's awkward when you're leaning around a camera. <laughs> now I did tape my corners. So hopefully it won't shift as much. The satin, satin's a nightmare. I would suggest the first time you do it, you use flannel for your lining. And flannel works great because it's so soft and smooth. But my son actually wanted satin on the inside. So I just kept doing it with satin. It can be a nightmare, but you know, I'll just keep buying tape. I am using masking tape on this. It has worked great thus far. It's stronger, so it will shred that satin like crazy when I pull it away. But it works out pretty good. machine has to get ready for the next one which is that's the end of this okay so our first hooping is done we can take that out nice and carefully because crazy lady uses satin see that's what the name I, sh I shouldn't have gone with eclectic crafter I should have gone with crazy lady I called myself that all the time. I just take the whole thing out. Get my little scissors up here. I cut at this point just to cut through those threads because they, they don't want to let go. We're just going to get this all pulled off. Nice and clean. Other little scissors. I have these little Fiskars with the curved tip. The tip doesn't on mine, or it could be they're just so old. The tip seems to be worn out. It doesn't cut real well. Now you want to cut close. Probably don't have to cut that close. Got a little carried away there. But in this corner, you definitely want to cut that corner close so that you can remove as much bulk as possible. So you can cut that. And then around the curve, of course, you want to cut close so that because it's going to bunch up. Everywhere it's going to turn in on itself, it's going to bunch up. Golly! <laughs> Tiny little finger holes. Fat fingers won't fit in there. And that's that. Now, remember, when you're putting it together, it placement stitch then tack down sticks for the snap then you put the top on and you put this stitch in and it is a reinforced stitch 
so it holds really well. You want these edges to come out flat. So you'll want to push it up and iron it in place. And that is our back. I just need to iron it. Which I okay, for the second hooping, it's a five by seven hoop. We will start again with our placement stitch. Why is it not? Oh, I forgot. Forgot a button. <laughs> Make sure you finish editing first. second hooping we've got our placement stitches in and we finished all the first hooping so in the book place the yellow placement I did lay down the front batting then the main fabric Front batting and main fabric. Yellow threads. <laughs> There's threads on everything. Um, if you ha cut it a little long, this I, is purposely made long. The 8 inches is definitely going to more than cover, as you can see. But you don't want it too close. And if anything shifts, if it's cut close, you lose something. And that's what happened with one of mine. I, conserving fabric, I used a scrap is what it was. And I thought, hey, it's covering it with like a quarter of an inch to spare. Yeah, that was not enough. <laughs> Everything slipped. Okay. So we've got this all down. You could tape it into place if you wanted, you know, put a couple pieces of tape on the corners just to kind of hold it in place. It will have a tack down stitch all around it to hold it into place because there's going to be a time when, at this point that you could have added a monogram or something if you want to put a picture on it. This. I didn't add anything to because it's a really busy fabric. All right, I'm back to the machine. And we're back to do the next step. Now we're going to do the tack down. And it is literally the same stitch again. So it gives you your lines again. Those lines are important. You're going to need them.
and now is when you would do the snap placement of course it falls on a red spot with red thread <laughs> and if you were adding a design to the front this is where it would be inserted on most machines if you don't have software to add it in the software you would have had to have added it on the machine and it would be at the end and so you would have to skip threads to it and then skip threads back to get to this next part Okay, we finished that. I have a pencil. I know, there it is. Got a piece of cardboard here. I'm going to turn this around and hopefully. Oh, look, I've got a red pencil. That's not going to work. It'll work. All right, so I'm going to line these up and extend it out. I need this little line here. So, you know, just a little small ruler. This happened to be what this fabric came on. And I'm good. I need to trim that top off so it'll fit in my hoop. It doesn't fit in the hoop. But you just need something so that you can go from one side to the other with a straight line. And I don't know where I've placed my ruler, so that's what I used. It works. Now, we've got two. I've got my snap placement in place. My iron's finally hot, so let me set that to the side. And let's get this placed. Now, satin can be sensitive, so <laughs> you might not want it on your highest setting, which of course I automatically did. This iron gets so hot that I can use it to do sublimation. <laughs> Small sublimations are done with this. I iron downwards because I'm trying to get that fabric to not show on the front. So I'm trying to pull away from that seam. Okay, lay down the front batting, blah, blah, blah. Now is the time to add the design or monogram if you want to add. Nice big words, so you won't forget that that's where you would do it at that point in the hooping. All right, take the back piece. Now we're going to, we're going to get some tape off first. I can tell you from experience, you really want to make sure this is in there good. Because I sewed one into the side seam. So now I take that. And I take this. So that I can make sure it's down. Grab my little iron. Come on. Hi, we've got a little piece thrown in the middle here because I discovered that this very important step was not in my video. I don't know what happened to it. So this is your front piece, the second hooping. We've taken it out and we've drawn the lines in, right? And I had said those stitch lines were very important. 
and then I showed you how to extend them out with you know a piece of cardboard ruler whatever we taped down the backing the flap and all that which I haven't taped it down here but I really just needed to show you the how we're going to line it up and this is so important get this lined up and held into place it is going to stitch inside of these lines okay inside of that line you're seeing at the top it's going to stitch just inside of that so you know that on the outside of that you're safe so all of this is going to get stitched down and I'll tell you I my machine just kept catching that top and catching it so what I had to do was tape across it now it worked for me my needle went through it no problem I was able to get all of this tape up if you are concerned about all the tape being there go very very slowly you know do a couple of stitches turn it off do a couple of stitches turn it off and just make sure that it's all inside of that line and then tape the rest of the body down also because it will shift and you want to make sure that you've got them facing each other this is the next to the last stitching so then we'll put it in and we'll stitch that and by that point we should be back to the original filming where this last final part will go on sorry about the little segue we are ready to enclose the inside outside of the bag this is the next to the last step get my hook closed Mm, I missed that one. Got to make sure. Where's my stick? That this doesn't. That your foot. Lord, can you see it? I can't get the right angle. Depending on what kind of foot you have, it could possibly catch your fabric. So at this point, you want to go a little. See, stop. It popped up. Come on. Go. Dang it. Of course, when I just film it. It's going to give me a hard time. It didn't before. stitching to do and our back will be done okay I see that this camera had stopped at some point I don't know how much of this I had actually lost so if you're all of a sudden seeing different fabric that would be why because any pieces that are missing I will just replace with the next stitch out all right, we've got that down. Directions say stitch out the U shape, blah blah blah. This will create the pouch, which we did. We've now got that pouch. And now it's time to enclose the whole bag. Okay.
fun part. You can see that one. My whole bag shifted downward. Hmm. Huh. That's weird. That's bad these days. And it will when it stitches, it will leave me an opening to turn with. I want to make sure I've got plenty of room. On the other side. Say I use a lot of tape. I mean, I use a lot of tape. Inexpensive commodity. I will use it all. And now we are going to stitch our final line. So, a little tip. My son one of my sons loves Chinese food. It's always getting takeout. But he does not use chopsticks. So he started giving them to me and I use them. God, I'm sticking that right in the camera, aren't I? I use them in here to help guide things to keep my fingers away. I've always just stuck my hand down in there. Now this is going to go around but leave a little opening and I did expand the opening so that it would be a little easier and that part will have to be hand sewn um, glued heat and bond some type of something to to get it to close And all the stitching is done. Now we have trimming to do. At this point, we are done with our hoops, so get that out of the way. Now, this is our spot. Let me get a pen. So this is where the stitches stop. You're going to want to cut just, I mean, a hair inside. Okay? All right. 
So I've got that trimmed. You do not. I cut away from it just to make sure I don't cut it off because we have to have it. And I'll tell you, I tend to cut too close for satin. Satin needs to be a little farther away. I'm going to do my corner and then force myself to go out a little further. The corners you want close, but not that close for the, <laughs> the sides. And then this, I'm going to fold that up and fold the others away. And take that batting out. I mean, I guess you could leave it in, but it's so bulky, it makes it so difficult for my fingers to stitch it, hold it closed and stitch it. So, we'll just do that. So, our first turn. So now you've got a bag like this, and before you can sew anything closed, you've got to get your corners worked out. Oh, did it again, I cut it too close. Okay, I'm going to show you my boo-boo so that hopefully you won't make the boo-boo. Remember I said with satin, don't cut it so close and then cut it real close? See, it pulled right out. Now I'm going to fix it. I'm going to hand stitch that and it'll just be a little taunter, a little tighter inside because this will all get folded in and ironed into place and I will just I will have to fold that with a very small piece and stitch it in place so it is fixable almost everything is fixable if you iron it down you'll have a better chance of it coming out a little easier for you I don't have any problem pulling that tape out you know reaching in and grabbing it because it's wide open at the top My little Spidey's upside down, but I don't think that'll matter. Spidey's always upside down. So, the only thing left to do is get that stitched in place. You definitely don't want to watch me sit here and sew this in place. So we will be back to show you the finished product. We've got that all sewn shut. Had to do a little overlapping there, but it's holding well. So once that's sewn shut, it is a matter of just flipping this out. I like to stick my fingers up inside and smooth it out. 
because I think it makes it a little easier to grab it and push it. But we each have our own way, I guess. Get my little pokey stick. Give it one more little Okay, hard to see even with my glasses <laughs> red on red but That is the mark for the snap. And I just take my awl and I poke it through. And I use these little plastic ones because I've got a billion of them. I've got some clear ones that I like on this type of thing. I made my son's out of this fabric and I used the clear ones. He really loved it because nothing distracted from it but you wouldn't be able to see it so on this one there's a male and a female this is the female so any goes here I know I always do it twice and it just flattens that little plastic bit out on the inside and this wouldn't work for something real heavy duty you couldn't use it on denim I imagine but you know I guess your sword depends on what you're using the denim for and what weight on the flap you can see how the long side and the pretty side out and this is the male side, the Audi. Males are out, females are in. Don't think it would matter if you got them mixed around on here. And you could probably put a Velcro dot on here, but the adhesive on Velcro, I don't have much luck with. So maybe if you bought some that sewed in place and just ran a couple of stitches through it. But that is your eyeglass case. I tried to make it big enough for sunglasses also. But that's my eyeglasses. Top to bottom. Little bit to spare. Satin binding. Padded a little bit. I mean somebody steps on if you drop it and somebody steps on it, it's still gonna break but gives it a little bit of mush and there's space so my readers are in here fine my son's glasses go in fine one pair of uh, my older son wears these he, all his glasses are real hard and stick out real round he wanted me to convert it to that I said, nobody's gonna want to carry that in their pocket I don't know what to tell you because they would have had to been this way but he has some that aren't as arched out and they fit in here fine and snap closed matter of fact that's why i changed this flap i was snapping it down a half inch farther that's why i said if you don't want to stitch those lines so that you put the snap where you want you can always put it down farther down but my glasses come to here come to where the snap is with a little bit of a gap right there I can stick my finger in I'm not pushing on my glasses to snap it I can slide my finger in and I think they turn out great they're so much fun <laughs> I've already made six <laughs> and I'm gonna make one more with Minnie Mouse on my flop to test the VP3 so I will have 
a Minnie Mouse one done up. What's on her feet? Well, isn't that strange? It's on. Hmm. I don't know. I even fussy cut her a little bit so that there would be one whole <laughs> mini. And we got pink satin to go with that. So I'll be doing that one later to test the pattern out on the other machine. Thank you very much for sticking with me this long, long period of time. <laughs> I've been filming all afternoon. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.